USS Samuel B. Roberts, or DE-413, and affectionately referred to as the Sammy B, was a John C. Butler-class destroyer escort of the United States Navy. She served during World War II, laid down December 6, 1943, launched January 20th, 1944, and officially commissioned on April 28th, 1944. Now, a lot of sources constantly refer to the Sammy B as a destroyer, and this is because of Navy terminology. Destroyer escort does not mean destroyer. They are not the same thing. In the modern day, they don't use the term destroyer escort anymore. At the time, the Navy used it to designate a ship that was a 20-knot warship designed with the endurance necessary to escort mid-ocean convoys of merchant marine ships. The Royal Navy would actually refer to similar warships as frigates, not destroyer escorts. And the United States would actually follow suit and refer to them as frigates from 1975 onward. In fact, even during the Cold War, between 1954 and 1975, they referred to them as ocean escorts, not destroyer escorts. Because again, they were not destroyers and were smaller than destroyers. Sammy B only displaced 1,372 tons. That was it. She was a very small ship. I am fairly confident in the assessment that Jeff Bezos owns a yacht that displaces more than she did. She had a length of 306 feet, a beam of 36 feet 8 inches, a draft of 9 feet 5 inches. And she was powered by two geared steam turbines, capable of delivering 12,000 shaft horsepower. Her design speed was 24 knots, that's about 28 miles per hour. And she had a range of 6,000 nautical miles at 12 knots. Her crew only consisted of a little over 200 people, 14 officers and 201 enlisted men. And she was armed with two single 5-inch guns, two twin 40mm anti-aircraft guns, ten single 20mm anti-aircraft guns, one set of triple 21-inch torpedo tubes, eight depth charge throwers, a single hedgehog ASW mortar, and two depth charge racks. Obviously, she was meant to deal with submarines, but again, she was a very tiny vessel, one of the smallest ships in the U.S. Navy's inventory, which didn't need to be big to do what she was supposed to do. I think the only ships that were smaller than her would probably be something like a PT boat, or beach landing vessels, and barring those two, lifeboats. She, she was small, is what I'm trying to say. She was a small, little baby ship, but she served faithfully, though not for very long. Sammy B had a shakedown cruise off Bermuda from the 21st of May to June 19th of 1944. She spent some time at the Boston Navy Yard before departing for Norfolk on July 7th. That same day, she actually hit a whale. Yes, really. At least that's what they thought she must have hit. And that impact bent her starboard propeller. Also, poor whale. That's, that's kind of sad. She had to be repaired, and those were completed by July 11th. Then she departed Norfolk on July 22nd, heading through the Panama Canal on July 27th, and joined up with the Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor on August 10th. She would conduct training exercises around the Hawaiian Islands, and then headed out into the ocean on August 21st, with a convoy reaching Etiwetak Atoll on August 30th. On September 2nd, she actually went back to Pearl Harbor, with another convoy arriving there on September 10th, and then conducted further training exercises. She once again got underway on September 21st, escorting another convoy to Anawetic, arriving there on September 30th. Then she proceeded to Manus Island in the Admiralty Islands of the Southwest Pacific to join up with Task Unit 77.4.3, or nicknamed Taffy 3. From there, she would steam with them to Leyte Gulf, off the eastern Philippines. Upon arrival, she would commence operations with the Northern Air Support Group, off the island of Samar. Now, we've talked about this particular situation in a lot of other videos. Basically, the Japanese had a plan in place if the Philippines was to be invaded, known as Sho Go One. It was a complicated counterattack that involved three separate fleets and one of them was known as the Center Force, or Force A. It was under Vice Admiral Takeo Kurita, and his fleet was rather large. His first section consisted of two battleships, 
Yamato and Nagato. Yes, that's right. Yamato. Like, one of the heaviest battleships ever built, Yamato. He had her with him. So, so yeah, that was, that was, that was neat. He also had Battleship Division 3, which had Kongo and Haruna, as well as multiple heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, and roughly 15 destroyers. This is all relevant because they managed to sneak up on Taffy 3, which was just a complement of escort carriers and their own screening ships. Six escort carriers, to be precise, plus three destroyers, and four destroyer escorts, including Sammy B. That was it. To say that the Japanese had the American force outnumbered would be a massive understatement, and Rear Admiral Clifton A.F. Sprague was a little concerned about this. Korea's force would come upon them on October 25th, 1944, and open fire. Sprague would be forced to maneuver his ships to take maximum advantage of the wind and weather, while pilots from the escort carriers bombed and strafed the attacking ships, even making dry runs after their ammunition ran out. He was trying to delay them as much as he could to keep them away from the carriers, and Sammy B was caught in the middle of this. And now understand, as a destroyer escort, she was absolutely in no way designed to take on a force of this size, let alone the ships that encompassed it. There, there were battleships there, um, you know, with the with the big guns, the really big guns. In fact, the cruisers in general were, were already bad enough. Like, really, Sammy B had no business being involved. But she didn't have a choice. At 7.35, she turned and headed straight for the heavy cruiser Chokai. Her commanding officer, Robert Witcher Copeland, would say to his crew, We're making a torpedo run. The outcome is doubtful, but we will do our duty. Smoke had been laid to cover their approach, and Sammy B wound up within two and a half nautical miles of Chokai, coming under fire from her forward eight-inch guns. But Sammy B had a trick up her sleeve. See, she was small. Baby. So teeny tiny. Tiny enough that if she were to, say, get right up in this cruiser's face, like literally right next to her, um, Chokai's guns couldn't be moved down far enough to actually hit Sammy B. Sammy B was too baby for Chokai to hit her. Sammy B would launch three Mark 15 torpedoes at Chokai while in this position, and one of them blew off Chokai's stern off like gone and she would proceed to maneuver like a crazy woman in and around the japanese ships again utilizing her size to her advantage getting up close to where they would struggle to actually hit her jokai would also be hit in her superstructure by sammy b's anti-aircraft guns and this little ship would fight the japanese force for over an hour firing more than 600 of her five inch shells and Sammy B was being pushed to the breaking point quite literally for this. Remember, her design speed was 24 knots. But, in order to get as much out of her as they could, they pushed her to 28.7 knots by overpressurizing her own boilers and then diverting all the available steam to her turbines. This was an incredibly dangerous thing to do, but in their situation, eh? I mean, why not at that point? At 8.51, the Japanese finally managed to actually hit Sammy B twice, the second of which damaged her aft 5-inch gun. That gun would actually suffer a breech explosion shortly after that, which killed and wounded several of her crew, but her remaining gun was still working, and with that, Sammy B set the bridge of the heavy cruiser Chikuma on fire and destroyed her number 3 gun turret. But then Sammy B was hit by three 14-inch shells from a battleship, Congo. These were devastating hits and tore a 40-foot long and 10-foot wide hole in the port side of her aft engine room. Copeland fought to save Sammy B as long as he could, but by 9.35 he was forced to give the order to abandon ship. And she held on for another 30 minutes even after that, with 90 of her crew dying with her. 120 would survive, clinging to three life rafts for 50 hours before they were finally rescued. She was stricken from the Naval Vessel Register on November 27th, 1944.
one of the survivors did happen to be Robert Witcher Copeland, who'd be awarded the Navy Cross and shared the Presidential Unit Citation with the rest of Taffy 3. According to the action report of the USS Samuel B. Roberts, the crew were informed over the loudspeaker system at the beginning of the action of the commanding officer's estimate of the situation. That is, a fight against overwhelming odds from which survival could not be expected, during which time we would do what damage we could. In the face of this knowledge, the men zealously manned their stations wherever they might be, and fought and worked with such calmness, courage, and efficiency that no higher honor could be conceived than to command such a group of men. Copeland would have the USS Copeland, FFG-25, named after him, and there was one more member of the crew that was directly rewarded. Gunner's mate, third class, Paul H. Carr. He was in charge of Gun Mount 52, which was the aft 5-inch gun. When that gun had exploded, it already fired nearly all of the stored ammunition on board Sammy B. Carr survived the explosion, and he was found dying at his station from a severe wound to his gut. He begged for help, but not with his wound. He begged for assistance to load another round into the breach. Like a legend, he would not survive Sammy B's sinking, but for his actions, he was posthumously awarded a silver star and a guided missile frigate, USS Carr, FFG-52, is named for him. Taffy 3's last stand is the stuff of legend. Though the engagement didn't last very long, the actions displayed by the men of the U.S. Navy deserve the greatest amount of respect. On this channel, we've already discussed USS Johnston, who was also sunk during the same battle, who also displayed incredible bravado against a superior enemy. There were others beyond her and Sammy B as well, and maybe we'll discuss them at a later date. But in the modern day, there are two memorials dedicated to Taffy 3. At the U.S. Naval Academy and Alumni Hall, a concourse is dedicated to Lieutenant Lloyd Garnett and his shipmates on Sammy B, who earned their ship the reputation as the destroyer escort that fought like a battleship during the battle off Samar. And within Fort Rosecrans National Cemetery, which is a federal military cemetery in San Diego, California, there was a large granite memorial that was dedicated in 1995 to Samuel B. Roberts, as well as the two destroyers that were sunk in the action, Johnston and Well. The wreck of Samuel B. Roberts was discovered quite recently, in June of 2022, by an exploration team that was led by Victor Vescovo. They managed to determine that she actually hit the seabed in a single piece, though she hit bow first, and with enough force to cause some buckling. Her stern had also separated from the rest of the hull by about 5 meters, 16 feet. She lies at a depth of 6,895 meters. That's 22,621 feet, or 4.284 miles. And that makes her the deepest known shipwreck in the world as well as the deepest shipwreck ever identified by a crewed submersible. She actually exceeds the previous record of 6,469 meters that was set in March of 2021 by her own comrade, USS Johnston. The wreck of Samuel B. Roberts is protected from unauthorized disturbance by the Sunken Military Craft Act. A permit for archaeological, historical, or educational purposes can be requested from the Naval History and Heritage Command, but otherwise, she is to be left alone. To be fair, at the depth she is, it is pretty hard to get to her. But the fate of her, and that of her crew, as well as their final stand, should never be forgotten. And with that, a special thank you goes to all my underwater train finders, some do 267, Orange Glass, Benjamin Owens, and Zach A1, Arthur Roy, Brian, Jack Carson's Railroad Videos, Lord Off 444, A Person 723, Royal Hudson 2060, Isaac for 1405, Charles Kwiatkowski, Matt Weaver, Tom Redlion, NS Productions 8104, 
Wheeljack8401, Rescues Greyhounds, The Baxter, Caleb Crosswhite, Ohio Truck 1, Andrew Bowen, Josh Johnson, Hayden DeGro, Caleb Rainwaters, Prez Drenton, Master of None, Mr. Sleepy, Travis Zielinski, Jared Brussel, Joshua Long, Hannah Bird, Amtrak 2024 Productions, Tommy Rossini, Ben McCola, Panzer Kitchen 131-232, Mark Holding, Dr. Racer78, G. Wiz, Mr. Terevel, Liam Wright, and of course, my dad. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fun farewell.